What's going on everyone? Chris here with Clutter Reduction Junk Removal and today I want to show you three ways you can get a tall skinny piece out of a tight hallway like this. So here's a door and then here's a washer dryer. Not too much space in between. This is a very common occurrence in apartments and houses where you have a bedroom and then you have a hallway or you have a washer dryer. Something is in the way and it causes it to be very difficult to take, let's say, a tall bookcase or a large dresser out of here without banging into anything as you leave. So we're gonna be using a hand truck, a dolly, and a moving blanket to show you three different techniques you can use to move a piece out. Now, as you're doing this in your own job, let's say you could use a hand truck and it's not quite working out, move to the dolly. If the piece is too tall, move to the moving blanket. I'm gonna explain why for all three and hopefully it gives you guys an idea if you were ever in this situation. Remember, our goal is to not bang up the property. This is junk removal. I can take this thing outside and smash it on the ground and break it. Nobody cares because it's junk. It's either gonna get donated or dumped or sold. But I don't want to bang up the wall in the process. I don't want to scratch the floor in the process. Doesn't look good for you. Customer is not going to be happy. You may get a damage claim out of it. It's bad enough. It may hit your insurance, and that's going to be a whole different story. So we are all about moving things safely. I'm going to be showing you the first tool, which is a dolly. So I actually have this bookcase on the dolly already, but there's a piece of plywood underneath it, which actually makes it a little bit more square now. So it's a little bit more like a typical dresser would be. The reason it's there is because the bookcase is kind of too skinny to fit on the dolly appropriately. Essentially, once you get it on the piece, you're just going to feed it through and you will see why it makes things so much easier. This bookcase isn't the heaviest. It's an Ikea bookcase. It does have about 75-ish pounds worth of books in it though. The great thing about having it on a dolly is that let's just pretend I was a 200 pound dresser. How much more difficult would that be weight wise to have to control the weight? When it's on the dolly, all you're doing is steering it, right? It makes it a lot easier. It takes away the different challenges of having to control a heavy item and only focus on the steering of it. So a dolly can be a great example, but the times that that could be a problem is let's say this bookcase was six feet, four inches tall. Let's say the opening in my door is six foot seven. If I put it on a four or five inch dolly, all of a sudden that makes a bookcase just a little bit too tall to go out the door frame without damaging it. Now I run into a problem. So at that given time, I would actually not want to use the dolly. And instead, I may want to use a moving blanket to create a drag pad. And we're gonna get into that next. So for a drag pad, you typically want to fold the piece hot dog style, so horizontal. So with any kind of dress or a taller piece, simply what I would do in this position is I would tilt the piece back and just kind of kick the blanket underneath or get the hand truck and move it onto the blanket itself. And there you have it. Now, what we are going to do with this is grab this side of the moving blanket and we are going to pull it like a sled but I want you to focus on one thing. When I pull this, please do not pull up on the blanket. It will force this piece to want to tip backwards because you will be lifting up on one side of it. Instead, come down nice and low with the piece and pull flat. Pull it towards you. So I'm gonna be angling my way out you want to make sure that you're pulling with the piece nice and wide like you would a trailer or a truck going around a curb so you don't end up getting stuck on the side wall. You want to make sure you're pulling wide. And I'm going to feed myself right on through. So with the moving blanket, obviously you have a little bit more variables. One, you have to handle control of the steering a little bit more. You want to make sure your piece isn't swaying or tipping back. 
and you're going to have a little bit more of the weight factor now versus a dolly that kind of eliminates that. But it can be very beneficial versus sliding in on the floor that may cause damage. So assuming you keep your moving blankets relatively clean, I would suggest that you keep one in your truck at all times that you use strictly for this. When you're done, shake it out. Don't let little pieces of rock and sand and dirt get collected and then go to drag that across somebody's floor. That may cause just as much damage, if not more, when you have the weight compacted on it as well. So that is a great alternative when a piece is too tall to be put on a dolly with a tight door frame and hallway. And then the last thing is going to be a hand truck. Now, I have talked about this in other videos with elevators and apartment buildings when you come out of a door and you don't have too much space behind you and you have a ceiling that's typically taller than it is wide, you wanna go out backwards and stand the piece up and then shimmy yourself around. In this situation, it isn't quite as possible in a hallway because typically you have lights, you have sprinklers, in most houses, the hallways aren't too much taller. And because you are such a narrow spot, usually in an apartment building, you're gonna have a little bit more space than 29 inches. That's how wide my hallway is. So what we are actually going to do in this situation, if it fits, is what me and my friends at the moving company used to call the skateboard technique. I don't know if it actually has a terminology to it, but we call it the skateboard technique because you're gonna notice I have one foot stationary the whole time and the other foot is gonna be kicking me along like a skateboard. So I'm gonna demonstrate what that looks like. Do please be careful if you choose to do this. It is going to require a little bit of critical thinking while you are multitasking and moving at the same time. You are going to be handling the weight, the steering, and there are a couple of variables you're gonna to have to keep an eye out for as you are doing it and you will see all those in the demonstration. So my main objective in this situation, and I'll show you from the outside after this, if I were to take it out normally, I'm gonna hit the dryer and or the wall before I clear out this wall room. So what I'm going to do is hold onto the piece with one hand, hold onto the dolly with the other hand, keep one foot on the axle at all times, and my other foot is gonna be pushing me forward. I'm going to stand the piece up as vertically as I can without it touching the ground. So it's gonna be hovering along. And I am basically just going to glide it throughout. And it's not the easiest thing when you have a heavier, bulkier piece, but with a lot of practice, you will get pretty good at it. A lot of it comes down to just visualization. You need to just know how far away you are from the walls. You need to be confident. Don't be confident and wrong. Be confident in your abilities, but if you get good at it, it can be very helpful in these situations. So watch my footwork and you can watch throughout how this thing is just kind of hovering off the ground. So I'm holding onto the piece with this hand. Other hand is gonna be on the dolly. I'm gonna stand it up like so. One foot stays on the hand truck. I'm going to, now if I go out straight like this, I'll hit my dryer just so you can hear it. Right there, that's my dryer. I am not even remotely out this room yet. So my foot goes on the axle. I'm gonna lean into the piece holding onto it. It's gonna be hovering off the ground pretty much at this height the whole way. Just like the moving blanket, we're gonna turn wide so we can catch the turn without hitting the door frame. I'm skateboarding with my other foot. So those are the three ways to get a taller piece through a tight space. Now, depending on the size piece, if it was a long dresser, for example, my first instinct is probably going to try to do the dolly if it has the height. If it's too tall, the drag pad next. I will try not to use the hand truck with taller, bulkier pieces because it doesn't take much to slip up 
and catch a wall with a foot of a dresser and that will very easily leave a nice little mark and or hole. If it was a couch, for example, which people love to put couches in guest bedrooms nowadays, typically in that situation, I will stand that up on its side and use a drag pad and just angle the couch out on its side and usually the cushion side or the nose of it will come out first and we'll basically just turn it around. So it's gonna go like this. So depending on the bulkiness of the piece, you kind of have to learn ahead of time, okay, hallway's not very wide. I can't even, you know, fully stretch out here. So my first safer objectives is typically gonna be the dolly or the drag pad. The next step is the hand truck. So give it a shot, try it out little by little. Don't do it with something you're not comfortable with. Try to start small, use it for a bookcase if, if you don't need to. I try to tell you guys before on these jobs, if you have the time, practice with some of these pieces in a safe place so that you can get familiar with it. So when you're in a position where you need to know this stuff, it's more comfortable and you're more confident in your abilities. But hopefully that gives you guys an idea if you're ever in those positions. And I will see you guys next time.